the best project that you you you've gotten thus far obviously you want to get bigger and better but man just like each track is a work of a work in itself but the project you know track to track yeah. uh, um the order the story that you tell the content like it's so so complex you feel me so i'm glad i was able to listen to it like 10 times before you know really really talking about it yo thank you so much man um you know, I, uh, you know, it's been a while since uh, 2017, right? Uh, that's Savage Beauty. That's the last, like, project that I have put out. And um, I lived a lot of life. And, and as you know, man, the, the, the artist that, that I am, um, I really write from personal experience. Um, so I, was, I, I went through a lot. You know, I became a, a father, um, transitioned out of different relationships and lifestyles and things of that nature. And so, you know, it, this one took... I took my time with this one to really um, capture, you know, all those different episodes of, of, of my life in between the last, the previous release up till now, man. And then, you know, the baseline is, is my daughter, you know, who has the name Hope. And uh, yeah. so, yeah, man, um, I, I really, I really am excited for people uh, to, to hear this, you know. Definitely, definitely. Like I said, I feel like the project is a full representation of the John Hope experience, you feel me? But not like the overall John Hope experience, like where Hope has brought you in this last, like, what, two, three years, yeah. you know? Um, you know, it's hope for yourself. It's uh, uh, empowerment for other people. It's um, what Hope has been for you, whether it's your daughter or what's been going on in 2020. I feel like the whole project is different aspects and different perspectives of hope. It's like your hope, what it means to you, yeah. and you're putting it out there. You feel me? And each track kind of like encaptures a different aspect of that John Hope experience. That's definitely what I took from this. Yeah, man. I mean, that's very accurate. I think, you know, when, when people when people hear the word hope or when they hear hope all as well, I think it tends to... Um, we tend to romanticize it, right? Mm, right. Sort of this glossy, blissful, you know, hope. Beautiful, yeah. glittery, like, you know, and keep on going. I, I totally feel it. Yeah, and, and, and hope isn't really like that, you know what I mean? And, and, and the reality is there's, there's a sort of, um, there's a sort of uh, uh, reality of, you have to go through these situations and it's not, it's not the, it's not the best looking. It's, it's, it's tears. It's, 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 it's pain. It's, it's suffering. Um, it's, it's sometimes anguish It's anger, you know, but, but on the other side, it, it, you know, you need to go through all those aspects in order to get to that blissfulness that we all sort of generally assign hope to, you know what I'm saying? And I think, you know, with, with, when you hear John Hope, when you hear people say that hope shit, even yeah. the, the position of the words, right? Hope and shit. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like I, I never want to come off like, you know, I think the reason why people gravitate towards me is because um, of my authenticity. You know what I'm saying? The vulnerability. You know, we live in an era right now where we crop the sadness. We right. edit out, you know, we only post the highlights. And I think when yeah. you, um, you, you see it all. You see the full grand scheme my vulnerability my mistakes the things that i could you know improve on and uh you you get that with hope all as well when someone says i hope all is well to you um really it's it's a it's an opening for you to reflect and you're like wow yeah and i've been through some shit and it's like yeah you know i hope all is well you know what i mean so that's kind of what i was trying to drive home I feel like a lot in like culture, we even throw that around all the time. Like hope all is well, like how are you doing? I'm doing good, you know what I'm saying? But we never really like sit there and let it resonate. Like how am I doing? Is all well? Like, is this an open invitation for me to really tell you what's going on? Or do you even care about like what's going on? Do you really care that hope all is well? Um, I'll tell you this before we go track for track. Uh, yeah. When I look at the title, hope all is well, I took two things from it. I took that saying like, hope all is well for sure. You know what I'm saying? That, you know, uh, that phrase that we all throw around all the time, whether yeah. you mean it or not. Yeah. And then I also took it as a two piece thing, hope as in like the John Hope experience and all is well, because this been like a, 
it's been like a it's been like a little period you yeah. feel me like you know you haven't put out uh ep since 2017 yeah. an album since i think 2015 you feel yeah. me and then we kind of had we spoke to each other at the beginning of the year about like what we wanted to do and we had this whole pandemic that threw things off so it's like you know what i'm doing well hope all is well this is what's been going on like this yeah. is what it is yeah yeah i mean that's 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 dope man you know um I, I I never know how people are gonna receive it, but that's very accurate, man. You know what I mean? I think for for a minute, um, you know, I kind of got I don't know if it's lost, but I was very intentional about extending the brand. You know what I'm right. saying? Um, you know, I'm 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 not a young artist, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, how do I make sure that what I'm doing is sustainable? You know, this, right. this is a lifelong career that I'm that I'm you know pursuing. You know that I'm actively in right now, and so you know I had to do things that to make sure that all the the John Hope experience, the ecosystem, you know what I'm saying, is sustainable. So you know, um, you know, and that what that looks like is you know starting my own company, Zane Butler, you know, doing a lot of um, personality you know um um corresponding stuff you know on the road show and being a host you know and then you know starting my 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 brand the hope signature collection you know what i'm saying so you know um and then just doing a bunch of other stuff man you know i've been i work with uh diddy and revolt you know right writing um writing content and working with them you know what i'm saying so doing stuff you know about bt so yeah man so you know it was a lot of stuff but i think what ends up happening is is that people tend to forget that it all comes from the music so we had to right. bring it back full circle we gotta got bring it back we gotta bring it back for sure all right so let's go track for track let me um Put my phone on do not disturb because i'm not trying to have anybody disturb yeah. any questions yeah. coming up next so uh, you know, Roger will prop that out, but all right, we back, we back. Yeah. All right, so let's go track for track. Um, the project, I got my notes right here. The project opens up with where we come from, featuring Jim Jones. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So you got the collab, you got the the feature. Yeah. Um, I think this is a perfect way to start the new era of the John Hope experience. Yeah. Um, one of the things that stuck out to me is like what your definition of hope is. And like we said, it's not always pretty, you know, and without adversity, there's no success. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure the album is a representation of all your successes, your failures, your sacrifices, the adversities since the last project. Why was it so important to open up like this? And why was it important to have Jim Jones open with the spoken word i mean you could have got a verse you could have gotten anything but you know you got a really nice spoken word um how did that come together and why is that so important for you know this new era the first track out of the new era yeah man you know shout out to jim jones man the legend the homie um and shout out to my man pone that's his guy he kind of put that thing together but um i really wanted to 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 do something different i think um you know, with, 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 with Jim Jones and John Hope, that's, that's an unlikely prayer. I don't think people would put the, them two, us two together, you know, right. um, but, but, you know, when I think about Jones and I think about his charisma and I think about, you know, the content and the evolution that he's gone through, you know, um, I was like, yo, this is kind of like where I'm at, you know what I'm saying? Again, you know, um, I feel like my music, you know, for the audience that I'm speaking to, I'm speaking directly to the streets, directly to the people, you know what I'm saying? And so it's not going to be um, served in a way that's, uh, I want to make sure it's palatable, you know what I'm saying? Right. I'm not, I'm not here to um, Talib Kweli it, you know what I'm saying? Or, or, or like, you know, make sure- yeah. You know, you have to put some, you know, incense on it or something like that. Right, right, right. This is this is your shit. <laughs> right. This is direct. This is this is unfiltered. This is, you know what I mean. Uh, so, you know, I reached out to Jim Jones, and it was an honest feature, man. You know, he 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 sent it back. He took like 17, 18 takes, man. And, and wow. All you know, it was a, it's definitely a collaborative effort. I told him the, the 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 concept, and he knocked it out the park, man. You know what I'm saying? And shout out Danny Keys, 
who provided the bed to it, you know, the musical bed and, you know, the guitars and everything. It really just sets the tone for what you're about to indulge in, you know? Absolutely, absolutely. Like, shout outs to Jim Jones and, you know, it's a perfect, like I said, it's the perfect introduction to the new era of the Hope experience, especially because we're diving into a project that is like giving you so many different aspects of the John Hope experience or of Hope, you know, Hope for anybody, you know? So I think it was important to open up with just like a kind of like a introduction, like, yo, this is my definition of Hope. Mm -hmm. This is what it is. You know, this is how you find it where you are. Now let's jump into the project, which you definitely do. THS, that hope shit, yeah. 100% uh, yeah. featuring uh, Israel Wusu. Yeah. Um, man, you snapped in the bag. You feel me? Uh, this track, it tells the story of your struggles. Yeah. Uh, what have, what hope has been for you and where it's brought you. You feel me? And we started this where, and I wrote it down. Like whenever we talk about hope and being hopeful, it's glittery, it's glamorous. Yeah. You, you're going to use that hope and that hope is going to bring you to all these places. But when hope's most effective is in those dark, those dark times, you know, it's important that you have hope when you know you're flat on your face, flat on your ass, you know what I'm saying? Because that hope is what brings you out of those moments and keeps you going. Um, tell me about one of these times, because you talk about a few things, you know, um, tell me about one of these times where it was hard to have hope, where it was really difficult to have hope. And um, that ended up being the one thing that brought you all the way through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, so, you know, THS, man, um, again, it's, it's just about establishing these definitions. Like, this is what hope is. This is what mm -hmm. hope is in the context of this project. And so for me, you know, one of the lines that sticks out from that song is um, when it says that hope shit is what I would lie on to escape from my family and friends who swore they had faith. Um, right. You know, that was a, that, that's been a challenge or that was a challenge when you have people who are close to you, people who see you put so much blood, sweat, and tears and work into your craft and you took in, into your creativity and they don't really value it. You know, um, they right. either dismiss it. They think there's an end, there's sort of an end cap to it. It's like, you know, that you're supposed to transition and then just go and do something else. And it's like, you know, for me, I'm going to die behind this. Like, this is what I'm going to do until I leave this earth. And, um, you know, there were some people in my life that, you know, um, I would I would go to them, you know, or share my, my dreams and my aspirations. And it would either be this explicit dismissal or this sort of like passive, like, oh, that's cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. But then when you, you see them react and respond to total strangers, you know what I'm saying? And they gravitate towards that, doing the same exact thing. Um, and so, you know, there's, there's a different type of, um, there's, a, there's a deep dive that you have to go into as a creative to really, like, believe in yourself, to really, like, um, value and know that what you're doing is is dope and undeniable because the world at large is not going to agree with you you know right you got to look it's it's really the world is in in society is set up um it, 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 it the, it's gravity right it's it's not there's a resistance and so you have to really dig deep to really push forward through that you know because it's it's not made for you, you yeah know what I'm there's a absolutely deeper level you know so that's what this this record really speaks to you know what i'm saying i think a lot of times creatives as creatives we look to the people who are around us to um to be the ones that you know kind of pump life into <laughs> into what we're doing and it you come to that point where it's like, yo, that's not what it's about. You feel me? And I don't think it's like personal. I think it's just like ignorance and just the world we live in. You feel me? Where this uh, idea of success and uh, these goals and dreams that we have, you know, uh, they're handed to us so easily, whether it's on IG, on TV, you feel me? You don't see success from the ground up. You feel me? And anyone who's chasing the dream or, you know, really working towards something, no, you, nobody sees your vision like you do. You feel me? So you're not going to get that. Uh, you're not going to get that support. And like you said, there's like a pull of gravity. There's, you know, this balance that 
this balance and this energy that we're all part of this cycle. You feel me? And a lot of times you're working against that. You're working against that. You got to find it within you. Um, you have to find it within you what that hope is to bring you through. For you, it was like maybe, uh, you know, an escape from family, from um, things that were going on where you were, where you were living, but you found that uh, hope within yourself to keep, your, keep you going. And that's really what drives you towards, um, you know, achieving success. Uh, Israel Wusu, dope artist, yeah. dope new artist from the city. You feel yeah. me? I got to speak with him. Um, we had a really good conversation. And it makes sense to put him on this track because, you know, he's someone that understands, um, he understands his roots. He knows what he's doing and that shines through what he does. Why was it important to put a new artist like him on this track that hopes shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to Israel Wusu, man, and Marlon on the keys, um, Watts as well. Uh, listen, man, Israel Wusu is somebody that, you know, I, I really love him like a dear brother, man. Um, we, we met, I want to say 2018, 2019, maybe, um, and just the his approach, his songwriting, um, just his person. You know, we've been able to have a lot of like vibe sessions, just sitting in the studio and just you know just vibing with one another, learning from one another. And um, he came to my session, um, and he actually he like bogarted himself on this record, man. He heard it. And was like, yo, he calls me Unk. He's like, yo, Unk, I need to get up on this. Like, he was not this gonna one. leave unless he got on this record, man. And um, man, he uh he delivered. He delivered. He gave it that, you know, from from a sonic standpoint, THS is for my day one fans who appreciate lyricism and straight rapping. You know what I'm saying? And so I always had I had to feed that bass, feed that core, and then you know, Wusu just gave it that element at, you know, from a production standpoint, as the song transitions, it comes back and Wusu just gives it that element, man, where, where it really drives home to kind of bridge that gap. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. And I feel like you did that with all of the, every collaboration on here, you know, it's not like you were just picking, picking people to put on the tape or putting them wherever, or just having collaborations. Everybody was brought together in a sonic and like content wise, like it just makes sense all the way around. You feel me? So, you know, we'll get into Wusu again, cause he's on the track. He's on the album again. Um, the next track is Black Rose, which was the, the lead single, or, you know, I would say like, you know, that first introduction to the project or this, new era yeah. i think black rose came out almost two years ago though right yeah well top, top of the year january tw uh of this of this year 2020 2020 yeah january, oh wow the top of the year so it felt okay it feels like two years ago but it feels like two years ago but um you know uh black rose you feel me um you know rising above those adversities you know um this being the track that you put out uh, at the beginning of the year, how did the album kind of like piece together surrounding this track? Or maybe you put the track out and then like we had this huge opportunity or whatever you whatever you call it, the pandemic came through and it could be whatever whatever this time was for you. You know, it could be an opportunity. It could be a downfall. You know, I chose it to be, the, you know, the opportunity. Um, what was it for you? when it comes to Black Rose, how did the album come together surrounding the track? You feel me? Did this track breathe life into, um, you know, the, the track listing or was it the other way around? Was there a break that you took um, when you put out the single and then realized that we had more time to work on this craft? Tell me about Black Rose and how it just came about in the um, Hope All as well. Yeah, man. So, you know, Black Rose um, really was the... Um, the foundation, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, shout out to Watts, he's executive producer on uh, Hope All as well, and Danny Keys. Um, we were going, we were, we were, we were working, man. We were going to sessions, man. Really open minded, really open minded. Um, tossing a lot of ideas, um, just a lot of skeletons and things of that nature. And the great thing about this project was, um, next to all of the material that you hear, was very much from the ground up. So there's a lot of musicality you know, on the album. And uh, with Black Rose, man, um, I had a melody in my head. Um, I, you know, I do a lot of like voice notes and voice recordings and things of that nature. So I had, I had it in my phone and I came to the studio and um, it was me, Danny Keys, Watts, um, uh, 
Mary Gibson, we were all locked in. And there were, it was a real collaborative process where, you know, I played it. I, I, I did, I did it. I went into the, I went into the booth and I was like, yo, you know, we, you know, the beginning of, of the, of the record. And, um, and they just, we just played around it. We caught that melody. Danny, Danny just did his things on the keys. And then Watts really brought the, the, the aspect of, again, from a sonic standpoint, if you really hear it, it's the juxtaposition of, of sort of this positivity and this vibrance, and then it gets dark, you know what I'm saying? Yes, absolutely. So, you know, it's really, from a sonic standpoint, we wanted to make sure that the listener was engaged and you're listening and then it just hits you and you're like, oh snap, black mm -hmm. rose, I'm a black rose, you know what I'm saying? So, and it shot, and then we go back to Mary, you know? Um, and a lot of, a lot of the, 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 the undertone, um, is basically just to, you know, believe in yourself despite what, what you're going through and know that, you know, um, don't feed into the fakeness, you know what I'm saying? And so Mary delivered, you know, and, uh, yeah, you know, it was a, it was a well collaborative, uh, execution. Sonically, it's super dope because the track has levels. You feel me? Like you said, it starts off with like, you know, kind of like that hopeful, uh, that hopeful, like that. It's like that, you know, smooth, hopeful, then you snap and it's like, yo, I got to believe in myself. Then it goes back to Mary, who's like, um, if I had a dollar every single time, and then you snap again, you yeah, feel me? Yeah. Sonically, you take us to four different places. Mm -hmm. If you had to describe the representation of each of those, each of those, uh, uh, those, I don't know what to call them, pockets or, you know, transition from pocket to pocket, what would it be? Man, you know, I think, um, I think that it, it sort of crescendos, right? You start off, it starts off very like, you know, um, it, 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 it is that vibrance, right? The, and it's the vibrance that we're all used to, right? And that's the rope, right? That's how I'm roping you in. Like, you know, hope and has almost like this African, um, mm -hmm. you know, choir-like experience and I'm roping you in, but it's like, okay, before you got, we get to this, you got to go through this part. And okay, yep. it's dark, you know what I'm saying? So it's like this. Um, it snaps too. It's like, yeah, a, it's, it's, you it's, actually it's, have that sound? Like, it's, yeah, here we go. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it, 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 it's this sort of like rugged positivity. It's this darkness, you know what I mean? And then we come back into this, into this bright, almost but cautionary sort of Mary's like, you know, there's so many fake people in this world. You know, if I had a dollar for everybody, who, every time someone said, yo, I'm a real one or I'm a real nigga, and right. then I'd be rich. You know what I'm saying? And so rich that I could buy a whole town. You know what I'm saying? And so that's kind of like the last piece, man. And uh, for a song so short, I think you go through, like you said, so many different pieces that you, it's a well full meal. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. For sure. And I like that, like, the whole album is complex. Like we keep on saying it's complex, you know, sonically content wise, the representation in your life. And I feel like that track is the perfect lead single, you know, uh, listening to it. Remember, I remember the first time I listened to it uh, in January, you feel me? And how I had to listen to it a few times to really, you know, pick it up. And then, you know, being able to listen to the album, it's like, I hate word. I see what he did there. You feel me? I absolutely see what you did there. Um, the next track, my God, my God, my God, I should say. Um, yeah. Featuring C's and Israel Wusu again. Now, I love this track because of the collaborative effort. Yeah. I feel like it's the perfect contrast, the perfect contrast of the content. Yeah. Um, the perfect contrast between where C's is coming from and where Wusu's coming from and where you find yourself. Yeah. Um, I feel like this track is a representation of the fine line, a very fine line between right and wrong. Yeah. And a lot of the times, or the fine line between right and wrong and how easy it is to cross that line where we come from. Mm -hmm. My first question with this track is, are you a spiritual, religious person? And talk about that fine line where faith in God or hope brings you through these battles. Yeah, that's a really good question, man. So, man, it's a real good track. You feel yeah, me? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if I could be, you know, Frank, that is actually my favorite track on the album. 
I mean, if I like my God is 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 just that. You know what I'm saying? I love it. I love it. It's my favorite track. Shout out to to C's. Shout out to Wusu, man. He delivered again. Um, you know, um, and 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 it, uh, use use the word collaborative, man. So I, I wrote the hook, man. And um, you know, despite me writing it, I could not have done it any more justice than what Wusu did. You know, like I had an idea, I wrote it and I was like, yo, can you deliver? And he just took it to a whole nother thing. You know right. what I'm saying? Um, yeah. You know, so my my relationship with, with, with God is, is, a, is a strong one, man. I pray. I pray a lot. I'm very spiritual. I was raised Catholic, but, you know, based upon all that stuff that was going on, you know, I kind of just deviated from an actual religion, you know, but I'm more spiritual. I pray, okay. you know, and I'm very connected to, to, to God. And uh, I really wanted to highlight with this record, um, you hit it right on the nail, like um, the relationship between us as human beings, whether it's street dudes and, and God, and, and it really goes to show that we're all one decision away we're all right. Um, we're all under the umbrella. Whether it's you could you you posit yourself as you know um, a, a Christian, holier than thou, or somebody in the somebody who's a, a dope boy. You know what I'm saying? Um, that you know, God. At least I like to think loves you all the same. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so you know the 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 description between what you know. I mean the description of. Caesar's verse, man. I mean, that, that was a beautiful, masterful, but the way he, like when he, and you know what's so cool? He wanted to change his verse. No, no, don't I, change I, it. I, I, yo, wait, I'm literally on, 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 a, on a speakerphone with him in the studio and everybody's, it's my engineer, Brady, it's like four, five of us. And we got him, we're like, yo, bro, you delivering. He's like, yo, you sure? I want to do some others. We were like, <laughs> yo. I like his... I like his verse because it also challenges that expectation of what is right and what is wrong. You feel exactly. me? Because like a lot of times, exactly. you know, in that sense, like he was saying, like, I got to protect my family by all means. You feel me? So at the end of the day, I'm still doing right for what's right for me. But like, if yeah. I cross that line, it doesn't make it right or wrong. Maybe it's up to whoever you ask. You feel me? But that's why I really, really liked his verse because it shed light on that. You know, just because you do something wrong, you might come from like the most genuine or, you know, the most genuine or most a place that makes sense to you and in God's eyes, is that right or wrong? Like, you know, it, it definitely, this track really, really challenges a lot of expectations. Absolutely. It's very open-ended to that question mm -hmm. you asked, you know, what is, who is right or wrong? You know what I mean? And when you, when you come from where we come from, you know, I, nine times out of 10, you're operating out of survival mode. And when right. you operate out of survival mode, your moral compass is, is definitely going to be uh, uh, malleable and flexible. You don't really have enough time to think about what's right or wrong because you got to keep the lights on. You know what I'm saying? And I, I think right. about a lot of decisions that my mother had to make. When, now that I'm a parent and I look at what the things that my mom did, you know, would I do them? No, but I know why she had to do them and it made me the person that I had to, had to be. My mom, and this ain't no, you know, whatever, like she would, she would, because she had to work and couldn't find a sitter, she would leave me home five years old, bro. You know what I'm right. saying? Like home alone, like, you know what I'm saying? Telling me, don't pick up the phone, don't open the door, da, da, da. And I'd be like, okay. And I'd just be home watching TV, you know, this, that, and the third until my mom has to come home. Would I do that? No, but that's what she had to do. And was she right? Was she wrong? Well, you know, um, I'm, I'm here, I'm alive. I got a master's degree. I'm a professor, I'm an artist, I'm a worldwide right. leader. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, in some aspects you could say, yeah, she was right. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, um, that's what that, that song is about with my God. And, and, um, just, just probably one of my, my, from a songwriter standpoint, my favorite record that I've ever written. Man. You know what I'm I like it. It's a really good one. And you ended with a spoken word from Charlemagne, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, yeah. that one. Um, the track, it brings, you know, Sean's light on an, uh, another aspect of hope, you know, and, um, you know, how it's so easy to become hopeless 
yeah. within the restraints of the community or where we come from, of the hood, of the streets. How do we bring hope to these pockets, these communities that need it the most? Because like Charlemagne said, you know, within 2020, you got a pandemic, you got, um, you know, economy all over the place. We need hope. But how do we shine light and bring hope to these, these, these pockets? Yeah, man, I think a lot of it is mindset and reference, you know, like we have to change the mindset of um, th this, this notion, this age old notion that, you know, once you make it out, you got to stay out and, and, and leave, right? And, and, and no, actually, once you make it out in whatever way you can, you want to come back and reinvest, reinvest into the community and develop and develop our own eco ecosystem and that investment you know you hear a lot of people talking about buying back the block and all that stuff yes that's good but also the investment of time of energy of effort you know what i'm saying knowledge you know, of knowledge sharing what knowledge that you that that got you out of the predicament you know right what I'm so you know i think that's really what it is and then you know you begin to really deprogram the mindset of like yo man i need to get out or where i'm at is so desolate that i don't need to put any value in it because a lot of this stuff man is just about value you know like you know when you look at a lot of these blocks you know what i'm saying there's five dollar stores there's two liquor stores there's five right. food, you know all that stuff is all devaluing so mm -hmm. like the more that we can combat that with you know um you know just community stuff and 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 just an understanding that you are worthy i think that's really then you'll start to see that seed get planted you know what i'm saying and, and definitely really grow so i really think it's a mindset thing and the reference of people like you and myself that people that the young the next ones coming up after us can look to and be like oh okay he's from the south and he made it to seattle you know what i'm saying or he's from the north end in arbor Glen, and he made it right. this way you know what i'm saying like that 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 reference that point of reference means so much you know there's a reason why black panther was so successful there's a reason why kids are crying because absolutely died right because that he he represented something that was you know we haven't seen before that was like a untouched you know and that's why everybody was like that's why i had the response it did and that's why it's so important to the culture and it's so important that we keep on putting out those representations you feel me so that you know, that representation turns into reality, not for just one person, but for everybody. Absolutely. Uh, 100%. Now, House of Cards featuring C's. Yeah. We in our bag. We, we're in our bag throughout, throughout the project, but there's just those, those tracks where it's like, this is the hope experience. I'm on that shit. I'm popping my shit. I'm still here. What's good? And, you know, that's where we are with House of Cards. You feel me? Yeah. You're still on here you're still out here dreaming you're chasing the dream you feel me that's very much intact you know but dreams evolve as well you know dreams evolve and they steer closer to our purpose you feel me so we have this dream and we're working towards that we're working we're working and as long as you have that dream you're you're, you're you still got the fuel in the engine to keep you going but on my journey i've realized that my dream has evolved like tenfold and um I feel like it always gets closer to purpose. And I think that's the real success in a time where, you know, we're looking at Instagram, we're looking at, you know, quick success and you're seeing the byproduct and you realize in your journey, like, you know what, like maybe me getting closer to self, finding my purpose is the true success. Exactly. And beyond that, you know, the materialistic, the recognition, that's like the byproduct of the success. Tell me about, um, how your dreams have evolved since that first project and um, how experiences have like impacted that change in that movement. And then tell me about your house of cards. Like how, how is it looking? You, yeah. you feel me? tell me how the house of cards will look if we were actually looking at something. Yeah. So, you know, um, for me, I, I think it's important for our dreams to evolve and our goals to evolve because we, 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 we grow, right. We, 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 we experience new things and with new things, you're incentivized to, um, to level up, you know what I'm saying? At least, you know, uh, people like you and I. So for me, you know, once, you know, a prime example is once I had my daughter, 
You know what I'm saying? Once, once, once I have my daughter, man, my sense of purpose, um, my, my, my approach towards my music and my art became a legacy play. You know what I'm saying? You know, and then, you know, when I look at, again, when you have these experiences within the culture, like when Nipsey Hussle passed or when, you know, Pop Smoke passed or most recently King Von and Mo3, you know, when, when you see things like that and you see how their growth is stunted by untimely demise, um, it's important for me to get out. The goal for me is to get out every ounce of thought, belief of, of my being out into the world. So that may, you know, that way my daughter has a digital footprint and a legacy to follow after, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. all this stuff, you know, when people say content, when people say, yo, I got to put this out for me, that's the, that's the, that's the, the, the purpose behind it. You know what I'm saying? It's not just to put it out, but it's to put it out. Um, knowing that, you know, I want to be able to tell my story and articulate of my story so that my daughter knows exactly who her father was and the relationship that we, that, they, you know, we both have, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, th 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 that's my, that's my latest dream and goal is, you know, uh, I I'm, I'm playing for legacy at this point. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't know when my time is, is going to be called. What was it before? What was it before? Like before, if right now it's like legacy and being able to have this dream to provide, you know, a blueprint, not only just provide material and like, you know, those type of things, but a blueprint, which I think is super dope when we look back on like our journey that we have, like this digital, we could go back and watch ourselves grow. And, you know, I think it's so dope. I was telling someone about that the other day, but now it's all about providing that blueprint for your daughter, you know, beyond the music. What was it before? I think before it was a little bit more uh, self-centered about, you know, it was more music related. I need to get on, you know, um, and at first it was the, you know, get a record deal and, you know, right. things of that nature. I think now um, it's just about, like I said, legacy, but, you know, it's, it's sustainability and ongoing. Now for the last two to three years, I've been, um, you know, I, I, I've been, supporting myself and creating opportunities solely off hip hop. You know what I'm saying? And I don't take that for granted. So I think before early on, it was just, um, it was just about, you know, may maybe, maybe, you know, getting in complex, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Or getting on double XL. It was very short sighted, extremely, extremely short sighted. And, um, and that, and that, that's natural. That's natural. You know what I right. mean? But it just goes to show that once you do check those off, you know, you, you, new experiences come and you want to level up. You want to you want to swing for for the fences, you know, so mm -hmm. that, that's that's kind of what it is for me, you know, in relation to House of Cards. Definitely. Um, you end this one. That's Meek, right? We, we're ending with Meek. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah, a word yeah. from Meek. And I, I like that because I feel like we've seen where Meek has come from, where he's gone and where he's going. And I feel like he's the, the people's champ. You know, he's speaking for the streets and he's he's providing that knowledge from, yeah. you know, the, the, the journey that he's had, the one that we were able to experience from the outside. Uh, looking inside, and you know, I think he's doing the right thing. You know, a lot of people are like, yo, Meek got to get in his bag. And I'm like, yo, Meek has a total, he has a new purpose. He's doing a whole different thing. You know, he's not on the house party shit. You feel me? Your guy's a champion. He's pumping knowledge into the streets. Why was it important to end with this spoken word from him? Um, it, You know, when I saw that interview, it was something that really resonated with me. You know what I mean? And um, I mentor about five or six young men that uh transitioning out of the training school they're in dys i've been i've been okay mentoring them for for you know uh probably like about two years now so like when they're transitioning out of dys into back into society you know i connect with them you know what i'm saying and what i realize is you know um a lot of times we get too hung up on respectability politics and you know language and things of that nature right so like you know, for me, when I talk to them, I talk to them very direct, you know what I mean? Very, it's not about like, 
you know, sugarcoating things. It's like, yo, you know, because that's the way that we engage one another. That's the way that they receive it. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I got to know my audience and know who I'm talking to. And so when we talk, the positivity is there, but the language might be, you know what I'm saying, on some street shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. That doesn't make it no less than if Chance the Rapper is doing it. You know what I'm saying? That Absolutely. You no know, less valid or what, whatever. So when I hear Meek talk to, you know, talk to those young dudes and he's saying it the way he's saying it, he's like, yo, you want to be a rich nigga? You want to get shot? Do you want, you know what I mean? Right. Like, sometimes it has to be that direct for it to resonate. So forget the way he's talking or the, you know, or whatever. It's like what he's saying is very potent and very valuable. And so, you know, there's an audience that will receive it that way it's gonna hit the hardest with it's gonna hit the hardest you know what i'm saying so you know i really i really it was just something that i really wanted to uh to uh just include and incorporate in house of cards you know okay yeah. yo the next track bluest moon this one it got to be my favorite track for yeah. sure it's definitely my favorite track uh you know you got rags on here he, yeah. he sounds great i haven't heard him for a while so it's nice yeah. to see him on the album yeah. it's such a celebratory track i see yeah. myself uh celebrating turning up with the people who's been on the journey with me vibing out i think this is a track that people are going like i really do think this is the track that people will respond to and will be yeah. playing at in the clubs and stuff mm -hmm. um and I love the track placement. Like I keep on saying, this, uh, this, uh, this, um, Sequence. this album, it, each track is placed effectively to like really, really deliver that emotion, that uh, the point, the message. You feel me? So, you know, right here in at this point in the album, we've been through various aspects of hope. We've had to have hope when it's the hardest. We've had to have the hope in the streets. We had to have hope within ourselves. You feel me? Um, this track is a celebratory, celebratory track where it's like, yo, I got here and I didn't sell out. I did it all by myself. You feel me? And that's why I hit so hard. Um, what does the bluest moon represent for you? What is the bluest moon? Because I could have went online and looked up like bluest moon. You, you feel me? But I didn't want to do that. I wanted to hear from you. What is the bluest moon? What does it represent? Man, you know, man, man, the other night, man, I was talking to my cousin and he's, he, you know, he's from the same neighborhood that I'm from. And um, we just started reflecting about the trauma that we went through, you know what I'm saying? And the things that we normalized, you know, we were like, we, we, we thought it was normal to see death or get beat by police or like, you know, very just small things like I remember one time my friend Dante God bless the dead um we were chilling on my block we were chilling on my front porch and it was like broad daylight and he came up to us he, and he's like 13 can't even drive but he came mm -hmm. up to us and he was like yo any of these cars he pointed to the cars on the street he was like yo any of these cars are yours and we were like nah fam he was like yo it doesn't belong to your mom or your auntie we were like nah fam he was like all right cool I'm about to steal it and we like, I bet, go ahead. And he do your thing, man. You know, he did his thing, broad daylight. Wasn't like at sunset, broad day, stole that shit and then lit it on fire in the middle of the field. And nobody said nothing. We thought that was regular, you know what I'm saying? Regular, but regular shit, it's just another day in the hood. <laughs> another day in the hood, you know what I'm saying? Where you're lighting cars on fire, you know what I'm saying? So I say that to say that, you know, when you start to, when you, you know, Blue, Bluest Moon is, is definitely celebratory and, and it's, it's this notion that if, if that the, the things that I went through, the things that you went through um, to get to where I'm at right now, if I told you, you wouldn't even believe me. You right. Know? You know right. You wouldn't even believe me. So we're just going to say it's the bluest moon. You know what I'm saying? We're just going to say, yo, you know what, man? If they wonder how how I did it, just say, man, it was the bluest, the bluest moon. moon. It was the bluest moon. Because when you say, when somebody says, yo, man, you know, um, or, you know, it, it was a blue moon, it, it means very rare. You know, it means very, you know, like this wasn't supposed to happen. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so, you know, that's what this record really uh, personifies. And, um, you know, it's a, reun a reunion with me and Bongo. You know what I'm saying? And Oh, this is a Bongo track right here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Yo, this one's, like I said, this is my favorite track for sure. <laughs> up, man. You know, um, uh, Bongo, man, you know, he, 
it, and the great thing about it, man, it really felt like day one type shit. We, when we heard the record, when we heard the beat, when we, you know, he, he, he uh, FaceTimed me and he was like, bro, it felt like those days when we were in the basement. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, and, and when for him to say that, what people don't know is that, you know, um, he's one of a few people that when he approves something, man, it really genuinely feels like like I, I'm on top of the world. Like I feel like a kid that 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 their father gave approval to. Like like when he uh, appreciates the songwriting, the way I flow, and things of that nature, man. Like it's like like it means the world to me. It means the world to me. So for him to really stamp it and be like, "Yo, we good," you know what I'm saying? And even with the you know, it's very right. PVD the sample. You know, I, I came with the sample. It's Jeffrey Osborne. You know what I'm saying? And uh, yeah, man, it's 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 um, you know, in rags just delivered immensely. You know, again, he, he's another one. I wrote the record, but when I gave it to him, he came in and took it to a whole nother level. Bro, that shit stuck in my head. You feel me? Like I just hear him. I, I don't even know the words, but at the, I don't know the words yet. But I, I hear that melody. It's stuck in my head. You feel me? This one, that's the one right there. You feel me? That's the one I'm gonna be turning up with Jay and uh, Rob. You feel me? That's it right there. Um, you also talk about like not selling out. You feel me? And at this point, we've had the hope. We've had to, you know, the vision and the success have evolved brought us to a point of purpose um tell me about those points where i know there's been so many so many instances and forms of not selling out in your journey you feel me decisions that you had to make where you know you could have reached the epitome of what you thought was success mm -hmm. but because you knew you had a purpose because you were in touch with who you were mm -hmm. and that hope shit, yeah. you were able to steer another direction which in, at this point is more feasible to where you want to be. Tell me about that process and why you're able to, you know, celebrate that bluest moon at this point. Yeah, because I'm extremely, extremely secure now. Like I am, I'm so secure. And I think um, right around the time that we first met was when that security was really seeping in. You know, um, I was very much like realizing like I'm enough. You know what I'm saying? Like what? Like I don't need validation. I don't need right. a blog to validate. I don't need a DJ to validate. And so, you know, right now you're seeing the latest iteration of that, of knowing that I can do, you know, what, what I'm doing, you know what I'm saying? At a high level, um, you know? So um, I think uh, what it, the benefit of that is, you know, I, I don't allow myself to take things personal. So like when someone tells me no, I'm not so heartbroken or whatever. Right. It just means you haven't said yes yet. You know what I'm saying? So you know um, when you're secure with yourself, rejection just means that it just wasn't supposed to happen at that time. Right? It doesn't mean that you're not adequate. You know what I mean? And so, but when you're coming up, when you're young, you're starting out, you personalize it, and you do. It does feel like you know you're not you're not enough. You know what I'm saying? So, right. You know, now what you're seeing with this album, this project, um, you know, this 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 representation, this latest representation of myself, um, you're seeing someone who 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 is a hundred percent secure. You know, one hundred percent secure themselves and able to celebrate the success that way. That's the best way to yep. do so. You feel me? And like what you notice about the journey is those no's literally stare you exactly where you're supposed to be like literally you can look back and be like yo three years ago they said no but the reason they said no is the domino effect that led me here you feel me so like for any creatives or anyone who's like getting those no's man just keep on going because that wasn't for you the timing is pivotal you don't want them to say yes for something that isn't for you right absolutely absolutely yo like i said i love the placement of each track we get to this like high celebratory place and then boom winter story you yeah. feel me yeah. such a like strong impactful yeah. hard hitting track and that's why I, I really enjoy the the placement because what i got from the winter story is that 
we could reach that bluest moon. We could still celebrate. But a lot of times in society, when you look like us or you, you, or, you know, there's these certain expectations for you or how you're supposed to move, it kind of feels like even when you are successful, you got to work 10 times harder or, you know, you could reach that, you could reach, you could reach a certain point, but that glass ceiling is right there. And, you know, that's what I got from the transition from Bluest Moon to Winter Story. Mm -hmm. 2020 has been such a, uh, such a year. Mm -hmm. Breonna Taylor, mm -hmm. George Floyd, Black Lives Matter movement. What's your initial response to, to, um, to just this year, 2020? What has been uh, uh, revealed, uh, the, the, the impact that it's had on, you know, I guess American culture, but even further than American culture, just like worldwide? Do you think that there has been a shift in the perspective? And talk to me about that opening that, opening that you had, you feel me? Just talk to me about the track, the transition, and, um, your response to 2020 is, I mean, it, it's a, a huge question, but um, you pack it up in this track, The Winter Story, and it features OT The Real. Yeah, yeah, shout out OT The Real from Philly, man. Um, dope, dope artist, man, that's the homie. Um, man, you know, I think, you know, my approach with this record was to, to really send a message that in 2020, um, we are faced with so many layers of oppression, of strife, of, of you know, we're dealing with a, a, a health pandemic, right? And then we're dealing with, you know, this social unrest. We're dealing with um, this political effect of this man that's in presidency. There's so many things that we're dealing with, not to mention, our own internal battles, you know, for, you know, for me, um, you know, this lat, this, what this pandemic and, and just 2020 this year has really um, shown me was to really dig deep inside, you know what I'm saying? Dig deep inside and to, um, to evaluate what's, what am I doing, right? And what, what am I doing to, um contribute to what's going on in a positive way in a negative way um am i working hard enough um um I, it allowed me to evaluate the relationships in my life the people that I, I i value you know what's really happening you know um is this somebody that's you know adding to my life or taking away you know so it was a really you know so 2020 was a period of evaluation and but also um, in that evaluation, in that inventory, um, it's like, yo, you know, you got to make sure that you do everything in your power to articulate who you are, what you want to do, where your goals are, right? Like you want to be able to tell your story. You don't right. want anyone else to tell your story. That's what when a story is really, really about. Like, you know what I mean? Like okay. with, with, with this pandemic, you know, you know, literally killing people, you know, in, 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 in life, you don't know what's going to happen. It's like, what is your story? And if you leave here, you know, we've seen it, you know, everybody posting and the way we grieve as a community and a culture, everybody's quick to post and say a story about you and, you know, hashtag you and, you know, reveal their last text message and this, that, and the third. Right. So you want to make sure that you're telling the, the story, the way you want to be portrayed, are you telling that to the fullest capability? You know what I'm saying? And so that's what, you know, that, that, that song is about, you know what I'm saying? You want to make sure that you live to tell your story. You're here to tell your story so that mm -hmm. no one can say it for you. Why did you open up with that 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 piece? I don't know exactly where that first piece came from, but why did you open up with that? Because that that's what kind of like made me think of like, you know, Black Lives Matter and everything that was going on right there, you know, police br brutality, because obviously there's a little situation going down with that track. Why was it important to grab that one instead of, you know, any of the other clips or anything else that went down this year? Well, because, you know, you, you, you hear the dialogue between the, the young man that's getting arrested. I saw it on Worldstar. 
we hear the dialogue between someone that's getting arrested and the police officer. And the police officer, ironically, it's this weird thing, you know, the police officer trying trying to quote unquote empathize with with the the the, the young man. And he's like, yo, I, I get that you're trying to empathize, but you don't you don't know, you don't know what I'm yeah. going through. You know what I'm saying? And it's ironic because the police officer is trying to empathize, but is arresting the person, right? And so, right. like, so if you, if you really were going to empathize, then you wouldn't have arrested this person. And now we're criminalizing this person. Now this person, you know, if I'm driving by and if I'm seeing this exchange, I'm going to peg this person to be a villain and this, that, and the right. Thing. But meanwhile, the police officer is saying, you know, I, I don't, I, I know what you're going They're through. empathizing. <laughs> you know, right. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, that was sort of the, 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 the inspiration for like, yo, man, you want to make sure people tell your story. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you want to make sure that you tell your story um, and how important it is to control your narrative and to be the author of your life. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So that's what it was. Dope, dope. Yo, next track. What I Built featuring Loop Bars. Yeah. Now, I like this because, like I said, the contrast is all there, you know, and this kind of, like, bounced off and contrasted to House of Cards for me, you know, whereas House of Cards was, like, discussing, like, that build and, like, what we're going for. And uh, What I Built is actually, you know, we're flexing what we where we got you feel me through everything this is what i have right here you feel me through the struggle through the haters through my personal battles through the streets this is what i built you know it's not perfect you you feel me but it's perfect for me um we're back in our bag you feel me whenever i say we're back we're flexing you know what i'm saying um you speak a lot mm. in this two minute track uh you're addressing haters mm -hmm. uh fake supporters. Mm -hmm. um, you speak on your beautiful daughter, Hope, and, you know, um, even you even go into colorism, which is something that hit for me because I have, bi I come from biracial parents as well. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a sense of having a, str uh, 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 there's a sense of having pride through these obstacles, through the struggle, uh, realizing that these moments and each brick that's thrown is needed to build that house. Mm -hmm. So talk to me about exactly what this track is for you. And um, tell me about Hope, how she's inspired. Is this like, when we, when we look at each track and each track is like, you know, a perspective of Hope, you know, you're obviously very, very proud. I mean, you know, this is life changing, your daughter is. So uh, tell me about this track, what it means for you. And then tell me about Hope and how she's been part of this, this journey and this, uh, it, like the evolution of the experience. Yeah, man. Um, well, you know, this record right here was um, extremely important for me to to write because it was um, just this. It, it was a it was a cementing of sorts, like of who I am as an artist, what I mean to the city, what I mean to the culture in Rhode Island, um, and also as a father. You know, um, I, I am I am a very involved father. I'm very committed, and there's nobody that can question that. Like again, they go. You know, I harken back to this idea of security. Like I'm very secure in who I am. You know, and so like, you know, nobody can sit here and say you know that I'm not involved or I don't do for my daughter or anything like that. Like I don't. You know, you, you just can't. That goes for you know, my daughter's mom, that goes for her family, that goes for anybody else, you know what I'm saying? And so, you know, for me, I was, I went through a lot of traumatic experiences as um, when Hope was born, you know, um, dealing with, you know, um, her grandparents who, who are racist, you know, there's just no other way around it, you know what I'm saying? Right. And so, you know, that's, that, there was a trauma there that, you know, I had to endure, you know, and I want to, I want to make sure that, you know, it's known that, yo, you know, you're going to value, you're going to respect us or you ain't going to be around. You know what I'm right. saying? You're going to respect us, you know, and you're going to value our do my daughter, you know, 
as a black woman, as a biracial woman, whatever you want to call it, you know what I mean? But she's black presenting, you know what I'm saying? And so, you know, the world already, you know, already I've seen the effects of racism, you know, placed upon my daughter. Like I, we've had right. to change pediatricians because of racial, you know, uh, 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 racial discrimination, you know what I'm saying? Um, we've had to check people because of discrimination. I mean, because of colorism and right. fetishizing over my daughter because she's, you know, mixed race, you know what I'm saying? So I've, I've, we've already seen it, you know what I'm saying? In every which way. And so I had to, I had to address it, you know, head on. And, you know, as somebody who writes from life experience, you know, I just had to, I had to, I had to, I had to let it all out, man. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, that was a, that was a, it was an easy record to write, but to make it, to bring it home full circle, Luke Bars came and delivered, man. You know what I'm saying? Cause you know, it didn't have a hook or I, I actually right. had a hook and, um, you know, Latrell Drain, Latrell James, who's the producer, um, you know, we just didn't agree on the hook. We were like, ah, you know, it's not there yet. And so I reached out to Luke Bars, man. Shout out to him and Van Buren Records. And what they're doing is phenomenal, their energy. And he's just a flat out star. And I knew him when he was, you know, a lot younger. And we would talk, you know, even before this, this fame. And so there's a relationship there. And I reached out and I was like, yo, man, I need you to throw that sauce on it. And he came with the look what I built. And, and it's like, yeah, man, you know, so all these bricks that are thrown, like you said, they, they, they built this wall, man, you know, and, um, and yeah, man, you know, in relation to my relation, you know, in relation to the city, you know what I'm saying? I just felt like, I felt like, yeah, there was a little bit of underappreciation about, you know, about what I, who I am and, you know, my influence and maybe because I'm not as vocal, you know what I'm saying? But right. you know, a lot of this stuff, man, don't get it fucked up. Like, you know, the line I'm, hit me. I was like, Oh, Oh, yep. he said that, you know, the handshakes and the eyebrows yeah. and I'm yeah. And I'm matching up, you know what I'm saying? And I'm matching up. So, you know, I, I just kind of had to, again, I had to tell my story. Because if I let someone right. tell it, they'll be like, yeah, Hope was some, he was all right. You know what I'm saying? It's like, nah, man, you nah. know, I, I opened doors, you know, like I opened right. doors for people. You know what I'm saying? There's things that, you know, I, I influence people, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, my jersey is in the rafters, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a walking statue in my city. You know Let's go. Talk that talk for yeah, sure. Talk that talk, man, because if not, who will? You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Yo, so uh, look what I built. We're here. You feel me? Amazing project. You feel me? You know, we have one more track, but uh, amazing project that just takes us, us through the journey. Uh, you know, the highs, the lows, you feel me, what those highs and lows have uh, 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 have become. If you had the chance to give John Hope from the beginning, let's go back to like Camp Street and Comstock. If you had the chance to talk to him, what word of advice would you give him on this journey towards what you built? I would tell him to take more risks. Take more risks, man. You'll be all right. You'll land on your feet. You In know? what ways? Do you feel like you were playing it like too cool or playing something that you weren't when you first started? Or maybe it was you listened to too many other people or you were following the hype. What risk would you would I you say? More, more so like um being trusting, being a little bit more trusting of others with I, I was so, so, you know holding my my art and everything that i was doing right. for myself you know what i'm saying um you know sometimes you know you gotta you you need a team you need people you know um that that share your vision but you need a team of people to to really fully execute and manifest your ideas in in ways that you probably couldn't even imagine you know what i'm saying right. you know working you know strictly independent um you 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 sometimes you just have you you know you only see what you see so you need somebody else to be like yo hope like you know consider this or whatever the case may be so i would say take more risk man take more risk okay and we're not done building so let's say that like you have the chance to ask because right now you're at such a uh, 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 um you're sure of yourself you're here you feel me yeah. like there's no doubt in like the journey what you brought what's here with you right now but we're not done building which is like also like really really like a beautiful part about life is like as soon as you think you have it all together or you think you know it 
shit evolves again. Something changes. You feel me? And it brings you to, you know, the next le- the next level. You feel me? If you had the chance to ask John Hope in like five, ten years, what's next? What question would you ask him? Man, I think um man, that's tough. That's tough. I would, I would, I would. I would say, I would say, man, you know, that's it. You know, like I would tell, I would, you know, I would motivate him to keep going. You know what I'm saying? To keep, just to keep going. Don't stop. Don't quit. Whether you're up 10 or down 10, as long as you stay in the game. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I would just say, just keep going. Keep going. Right. There's just no end in sight. I mean, when you look at the climate of what's going on right now with uh, the Griseldas and West Side Gun and Conway and, 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 and Rock Marciano and just artists that are entering like the, the game at a later stage, like it just goes to show how, how the culture is stretching and that there's, there, there, there's entry points for everybody, you know? Right. I mean? So I'm inspired by like, you know, artists like that, you know what I'm saying? That are able to do their thing and, you know, artists like Currency, you know, that, you know, I see myself in that vein where, you know, I have, you know, um, an allegiance of fans um, that support me. They buy my merch, you know, even right now, man, I'm doing well, you know, like, so it, it, it's only up from here, you know what I'm saying? So definitely, um, I just think it's a really great time. I don't really, I don't really put an age on my achievements, you know what I'm saying? Right, you can't, you can't, because like I said, timing is everything, and like, shit, we don't even know what's gonna happen next year, you know? Right. Like, we don't know what's gonna happen next year, how that's gonna impact or push us forward, or what obstacles it's gonna throw at us, so it's like, as long as you know yourself, and you keep on, you know, you keep on, you know, continuing to learn about yourself through the journey, and you have that one place you wanna get, you'll get there for sure. Absolutely, man, that's bad. Now, we end with the last track, African Boy, featuring Rags. And, I, you know, I, I love the collaboration right there. It's empowering number, celebrating your roots. Yeah. You feel me? You're so fucking popping and melanated. You figure, deal me. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Shit, my mom. I'm excited. You feel me? And I'm highly melanated. You feel it? All right, so... Um, I believe that there's a process for everyone to love themselves, you, you know, um, to embrace that, you know, that blood, your roots, where you come from, especially for us. Whereas like, we're told that like, you're told black isn't beautiful. Black isn't right. enough, right. you know, throughout the whole journey. You feel me? Like for me, I was always taught from my father, you got to work 10 times harder than everybody else, period. Mm-hmm. Just because you feel me. And I'm also biracial, so even to this day, I'm still dealing with colorism. Someone told me I wasn't black because my mom's white. And I'm like, what? Do you feel me? There's a process that you have to really, really dive deep within to learn to love self and to embrace Mm -hmm. uh, whatever it is. In this instance, it's that that being melanated, you know, the African culture, you feel me? Why was it important to end the album on this note you feel me it could have been like all right i had the hope and now we're here you know what i'm saying but this is all about empowering self yeah why was it important to end like this and what was it for you when did you learn to love yourself you know you talk about a lot of the battles that you had growing up uh being dark skin you know what i'm saying um you know coming from an african mother you know these are things that you dealt with where did you learn to love yourself and how did you get there Man, you know, I was it took that my relationship with 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 being African and and being dark skinned and 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 loving myself it 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 took a long time, you know, because I was um I went to predominantly white schools, you know what I mean, where we were taught the first you know the first piece of history we're taught is slavery, right? So we're taught- right. They try to put us in. Yeah. In this place early in the game. It's early like game, right. You know what I mean? So you you automatically, you know, that's in formal education. They're telling you that you are you you are a slave. And that's not the that's not the beginning of the narrative. We were kings and queens, bro. Right. We pyramids and you know what I'm saying? Um, and things of that nature. And so because of that, 
and because I didn't have any reference and, 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 and I didn't really love myself, um, I resented a lot of my African culture. You know, um, my middle name um, is an African one, right? And I would tell people- What's your middle name? Mondubu. Mondubu? Yeah. What do, wait, what do, what's your, um, what's your, like what? what? Oh, uh, so my mother is from Sierra Leone. Um, and my, I think, I don't know if your mic, your mic good? Fill me in on some. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, I could hear you. Could you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, um, hopefully he could cut that. But what's your mom? Yeah, so my mother, she's from Sierra Leone, from, from Freetown. So okay. Country in West Africa, um, right next to Liberia and Nigeria. You know what I mean? It would be like Providence and Pawtucket. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Um, so, and my father is from Liberia. Um, but I was, oh, word. I was born here, you know? And um, so, like, my, my household was very African centric, you know what I'm saying? And my mother, my mother did not identify, nor did she want us to identify with like black Americans. You know, she would always make the distinction. She would always be like, yo, I'm African. Very separate. Yeah, you know, so, um, and when I would go out, you know, into the, into the world, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, you know, I would get the African booty scratcher from my fellow black Americans, you know what I'm saying? And so, you know, um, it was just a lot of that. Like, I remember, a, you know, funny story. My best friend, Akbar, uh, one time he came over my house and we was like, I don't know, we was like, I was like 14 or something like that. He came over my house and we went to go play ball. And my mother was cooking some African food. So he goes into the kitchen and my mother was like, do you want something to eat? And he, he you know, my mother's, you know, making some food and there's like, he looks inside the pot and he was like, he was like, nah, I don't want this. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like he didn't, right. he wasn't, he wasn't cultured. He wasn't, you know what I mean? And I remember him making fun of me. He was like, yo, what the hell's your mom cooking? Da, da, da. You know, I don't want that African food. You know, he was ignorant, you know, young kids, whatever, you know what I'm saying? We laugh about it to this day, but knowing that there are um, kids that go through this, you know what I'm saying? you know, that their relationship with, with their skin complexion and understanding, you know, who they are, their hair, especially black women with hair and things of that nature. I'm, I'm thinking about my daughter, you know what I'm saying? And right. he has an afro and curly hair and whatnot. So um, I wanted to make a song um, that was very empowering, that was worldly, that was um, just very, very, um, very, self uh uh self loving you know what i'm saying right um you know when when to you know to be honest man that song is 10 years old wow that song's 10 years you've been sitting on it for 10 years 10 years man i had we what? we probably had like 10 or 12 different versions of the song you know bongo took a stab at it ljc took a stab at it um, and, but I always knew the concept was dope. I always knew I, I held on to it. And uh, shout out to Watts, shout out to Danny Keys, shout out to Marlon on the Keys. Uh, we just really, um, you know, we really honed in on it. They took my vision to another level and uh, we really hit it on the head. And then, you know, Rags, man, the way he just delivered, man, was incredible. You know what I'm saying? Again, you know, um, I wrote the record, but he just took it to another place. You know what I'm saying? And shout out Ashley Victoria. She's also on background too. So it was dope, man. It, it oh. was a record that like I really, really am proud of, man. I'm happy that it's finally out because I really was sitting on it for like 10 years. 10 years. I mean, it definitely resonated. I, I mean, I had the same, uh, the same, I had the same battle. You feel me? My dad's a librarian. My middle name's T.A. Oh, it took okay. a long time to say that out loud. You feel me? Right, right. You know, it took me a long time. And I feel like it, just like I resonate 100%. But, you know, once you learn to love yourself and you really, really get in touch with your background and, you know, get to understand it and you feel me, it becomes whether it's like, I don't know, we said bricks, but it becomes, you know, I like to call them superpowers, the things that you have to get over or, you know, the, the battles or um, adversity you got to get through, you get a superpower from that. And, you know, the one thing that you could do for yourself is love yourself and every piece of you. And that always shines through everything that you do. So I definitely 
love how you ended with this track. You feel me? It was needed. 10 years in the making. Yeah. It sounds great. And just overall, the project front to back <laughs> is sheesh. My mic's doing it again. <laughs> This project, could you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. But it's not loud enough. I don't know what's happening with this technology. You sound good on my end. Could you hear me now? Mm -hmm. Yo, this project front to back, like I said, it's your most complex project to date. You know, each track stands alone. It tells a story that adds up to the, you know, the the overall 360 moment. You know, you you take us on like a, a roller coaster. There's highs, there's lows sonically. It sounds great. You're in so many different pockets. You you gave us a little bit of everything. I'm so excited for people to listen to this tape um, and dive in as well. When is it coming out? Are we, what kind of type of promotion are we doing? Because you were supposed to go on a world tour and yeah. then it, it, it didn't happen. Yeah, man. So um, I'm, I'm, uh, it's going to come out. It's probably going to come out next year. You know what I'm saying? It's probably going to come out next okay. year. But, but definitely the rollout will begin very soon. The rollout will begin for very soon. Shout out to my man, CBN One Films. Um, you know, we shot a ton of visuals. We shot a ton of content for it. You know, like the 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 rollout's gonna be. It's gonna be. It's gonna be dope, man. You're gonna be really surprised. Like a guy named Harry, I feel like you were putting out videos every week for that one. <laughs> yeah, you know me, man. I really, I really want people, you know, to to really understand fully the experience with each each song. I really want people to experience songs, not just listen to songs, but experience them. So it's not just the audio, but the visual as well. You know what I'm saying? So um but yeah man, we got we got we got some surprises too, man. We got some surprises centered around this album. And um I think it's just gonna be a launch for um for some great things to come. You know what I'm saying? And 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 it's just gonna be like this snowball effect. And uh, so people can get with this hope shit, man, for real. Yo, hope all is well, coming out soon. I mean, like I said, I'm so proud. I can't hear you. <laughs> Could you hear me now? I can hear you now, yeah. No, you can't hear me. I can hear you. you can hear me, shit. I can't hear you though. Oh, for real? I can hear you now. All right. Okay. So good thing the interview is almost over because this is messing up. But yo, I'm so proud. This is such a good, such a good piece. It's fully representative of who you are, where you come. It shows growth from your last project. I think that, you know, I think that this is a perfect representation. It sounds good. You're, you're in your bag. The message is there. You know me, I like to hear, I take music like sonically. It's great. But then I like to dive deep like this and like really go track for track. It's all there. So Yo, you should be proud of yourself. You feel me? The timing is perfect. And I can't wait to like, I'm going to listen to the album again after this, now yep, that I, I have like some background on it. But yeah. um, yo, great job. Great job. Hope all is well. Second second official album too, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. This is, uh, yeah. Third, third, third. My fault, third. Third. So you, you do say uh, 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 beauty, what was it? Beauty, savage? Yeah, well, savage beauty. Savage Beauty. But I had work in progress. Remember, okay. there was a three-year gap before we met. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, you know, coming back. So, you know, definitely uh, work, uh, work in Progress, which was released in 2012. Would be the first one. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know. Okay, well, third project. It sounds so great. I'm so excited. Congratulations, Hoping. Yo, thank you for asking me to be, like, part of the Hope All Is Well podcast. I mean, like, that's an honor. You feel me? Because, you know, I know that everything that you do, do is quality and it's always dope shit. So, obviously, I'm doing something right. You feel me? <laughs> yeah, absolutely, man. And thank you, man, because I knew that we would have a rich conversation. And I knew that you would really, you know, take your time. That's why I was so anxious to hear what you were gonna uh, I was like you, you were hitting me up and I'm like I can't tell him that I like the project I can't tell him anything and I knew he wanted it too but I'm like I can't tell him because if I do the chances of us starting to talk about it right here and now it's like high and I just wanted everything to be like a immediate response right here you feel me 
Understand, understand. And I'm glad we did it that way, man, for real. Um, once again, thank you, man. And um, yeah, we're gonna uh, put some sauce on it, make it look all yeah. dope. And, um, Do you need anything else from me? Like, I don't know, like any liner or drops or anything, like real quick? I guess, no, if you could just text me like all your links or like your 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 hand your twitter i g um also um you know how you wanna be you know how you want it to 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 be titled you know Bennett knows you know what I'm saying like, like yeah like what my job is yeah or... you know what I'm saying whatever you know um but yeah man seriously man um that's that's all I could think of um it once once we start editing and, and getting it all right, if there's anything else, I'll just shoot you a text, man. And Definitely, man. Know. Let me know. Um, yo, your boy's about to be syndicated. I just got the job. Oh, word. I'm joining, I'm joining a show. Uh, it's iHeart's number three show. What? So like the Breakfast Club, Big Boys Radio. And this one um, is called The Jubal Show. It's pop, though. And Jubal, he's taking Elvis Duran spots. Really? So he's like, he's taking all of Elvis Duran's pockets right now. So he's starting on like, you know, the little pockets. It's in 15 markets right now, but he's kind of being slated to taking Elvis Duran's spot. So great placement. I'm joining as the syndication editor, uh, but you know, they're going to put me on the mic sooner than later. So yeah, I'm about to be in 15 different markets uh, and counting. So I'm super excited for that. Uh, that's the news that you, I got. Super excited. Yesterday, you feel me? So uh, I'll announce it in like two or three weeks. But we stepping into 2021, doing big things. You feel That's me? What it's all about, man. That's yo. I love it, man. To see the growth and you know, um, just that journey, man. I feel like I've been able to be a part of each. We've been able to be a part of each other's story from URI, you know. Yeah. Now and 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 really, man, you've always been a great supporter of mine. I feel like, man, when we, you know, I'm gonna be when I'm on the tonight show and and you gonna be hosting some the tonight show or, right you know i mean or whatever like i feel like we go this is the first of many the paths are gonna cross at the top you feel at, me and at it's the gonna top be, bro you know what i'm saying yeah it's gonna be great because it's genuine and it's like we've seen each other grow and work yeah absolutely man Jen. but yeah man let me know if you need anything thank you so much i really really appreciate it and yeah i'm super excited for everything to come out if you need me to post you need me to do anything just let me know you know that absolutely thank you man all right have a good one i'm going back to listen to all hope all as well all right boss peace <laughs> peace out have a good one man